Modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive part 4. Shopping for some parts for the engine and looking at a couple of potential major problems. When I go up to Black Gates it really would be a good idea and make a lot of sense if I took a shopping list. I think I got what I needed but we'll find out in the fullness of time. And my thanks go to the viewer who kindly sent me a Black Gates engineering gift voucher. These are a pair of injector water valves. And as you can see, it says on the packaging, plug cock type, which are 90 degrees on, 90 degrees off. These water valves are going to be used to supply the water to a pair of these, which are number three injectors for 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe. I'll be fitting these to the engine in a later episode. I also bought a 180 degree glow valve and a larger pressure gauge that I can actually read the pressure on because it's big enough to see. And to finish off the shopping expedition, I also bought some more springs. Two of these springs are for the buffers at the front of the engine, and the other two are for the draw hooks at the front and rear of the engine. I'll just put them somewhere safe so I don't lose them. This was the original pressure gauge, and it's a three quarters of an inch diameter pressure gauge. Nothing wrong with that, except it's a bit too small for me to see without my glasses. And as for the pressure gauge siphon, well, I'm not going to use that at all. I'm going to make a proper one. Today I'm looking underneath the engine. The engine's on its side and I'm shining a torch underneath the engine where the crank axle is. Time for the disclaimer. Please note this is not a Kingscale or Silvercrest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. Currently this crank axle, now I've adjusted the suspension, is fouling the metal plate above it, a metal plate that in my opinion just doesn't need to be there. This metal plate covers the entire top surface of the engine with cutouts for the various components like the boiler firebox and the cutouts for the eccentrics etc etc. And now using my small rotary cutting tool I'm going to cannibalize it further and cut out some of this metal work. More about this later probably in another episode. I've removed the brass plugs from one side of the engine's coupling rods. This is the other side and as you can see it has brass plugs in that are not removable and I don't see the function at all. Normally, the only reason for a coupling rod being shaped like this is to form an oil reservoir on top of the rod, and in the daily routine of a steam locomotive, after the fireman has filled this with oil, then a cork is put in the top to stop the oil from slopping out everywhere, and the oil in this reservoir then runs down the small hole into the bearing and lubricates it. In this clip, I'm removing the other side rod because I need to do the same with this. Also, this rod had a bit of a mark on it, so I'm using some emery cloth to remove any marks. I don't mean the laser cutting marks, there was a bit of a bad scratch on it. But now, as you can see, the damage has been removed, and now I need to take these brass parts out of the top. And the first tool of choice is a pair of pliers. Then I opened up the holes in the top of the coupling rod and drilled them a bit deeper to form the oil reservoir before drilling a small hole through into the bearing. I googled 14XX coupling rods to see what they looked like on the full size but I couldn't find a suitable photograph with a close up of this part. So for now I'll just leave them as they are. Time to run the engine and see if there's any improvement. And it seems to be running quite smoothly now. You will notice that the engine keeps moving from side to side. It's me that's doing that. I'm putting quite a lot of weight on top of the engine so that both of the axle boxes move further up the horn slots and the wheels move from side to side. And as you can hear, there's no fouling at all now. And the suspension is not over tight like it was originally. In this part of the clip, I'm pressing down on this rear crank axle and nothing's fouling at all. So I think it's going to be okay. My body weight on top of this engine is considerably more than the weight of the water in the boiler. Parts of the engineering on this model locomotive are exceptional and other parts are like this. These are the lamp bracket mounts on the side for storing the spare lamps. And the lamp brackets are lost wax castings with the nuts cast in and they're just pressed into these holes. They're not even stuck in there. So I'm going to modify this. I really can't do with this in any shape, way or form. And I can't show a great deal of enthusiasm for this cross-headed countersunk bolt in front of the lamp brackets. For the moment, I'm just refitting these brackets, but I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to remove the bolts that are cast in, and I'm going to drill holes where the cast in bolts were, 
and actually use bolts, proper bolts, you know, little bolts with nuts underneath the running board to hold everything in place. Once again, I've turned the engine over, it's sat on the bubble wrap, and here's the firebox. And this is the ash pan fitted in place. You can see the two long shafts with the brass knurled ends. Those are the pins that hold the firebox and stop it from dropping off. These long stainless steel rods had some stainless steel nuts on the end, but the whole point of being able to drop a fire is often you need to do it quickly if you get a problem with the water. So here's a top tip. Don't use the nuts, just use a small piece of silicone rubber tubing pressed over the end and the pins won't fall out. But you can easily pull them out. I have to do something about the trailing wheels. The side play is fairly excessive and the wheels hit the frames. Now this is not a good idea because, well, you don't want it to happen. So the first thing is to remove the keeper plates and now I'm jacking up the engine using one of the rolling road components under the middle axle and this will allow me to drop the wheel. But this was only possible after I disconnected the long rod that controls the drain cock at the front of the engine. Time to look at the axle boxes. What a surprise, roller bearings. A pair of roller bearings in the axle boxes, things are looking up. These roller bearings are not a very tight fit in the axle box, so here is a top tip. If you want to remove bearings from axle boxes, whether they be plain ones or roller bearings like this, get a piece of brass, then bash the end of the brass rod with a hammer to make it look like this, and then clean up the end, and this will form a ridge that you can get just underneath the bearing and pull it out. This, of course, only works for bearings that are very lightly pressed into holes like these are. If engineering is your thing, you could go totally over the top, get a piece of brass or even steel, machine it very accurately to put a step on it. This way is just a lot quicker. By the time I've thought about doing the job using the lathe, I can have the job finished and both of the bearings out as you see here. After I removed the bearings using this piece of brass rod, I put it in the choke, cleaned off the end and made these two small brass discs. And these are going in the axle boxes. I put some steam oil in there to hold them in place. And hopefully, if I've got my measurements right, this should allow some side play on the axle, which is essential for going round corners, but the axle will not collide with the frames. With the engine still jacked up using the rolling road unit under the centre axle, I now need to use a brass or tin under the rear axle, just so I can get one of the axle boxes in place. After this, I turned the engine round and fitted the keeper plate to the other axle box. And now when I feel at the side play on the engine, it's still there, because you do need it, you can't go around corners if this axle is solid, but the rear wheels can't touch any part of the frames now. It's time to fit this casting that broke off originally. A viewer pointed out that this was not part of the braking system, but part of the steam heating system, but either way it doesn't work, it's made out of solid metal. That's why it broke off. And it's time to do a little bit of touching up on this pipe. But rather than end up with lots of spots, I'm painting the entire section of the pipe. And when the paint has dried, you won't ever know it's been repainted. So what's been achieved by messing about with the suspension and the rear axle? Well now when I take the engine off and rest it on the bench, all the flanges touch the bench. And even though the wheel diameter is different on the rear wheel, the flanges touch the rolling road as well. This would appear to be a significant improvement on the original arrangement. The engine's starting to run very, very smoothly now, which it didn't do before. And now I'm going to stop talking and let you watch and listen to the engine running for the last part of the video. So thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.